Qualcomm absolutely destroyed earnings. I put it up there on the level of even doing, you know, better than uh, than Microsoft did. Right. They blew past expectations, uh, records everywhere. And I think the macro picture is, you know, not only did they clean up an Android smartphones, but they also delivered on those beyond uh, smartphone uh, commits. Revenue was up 41%. EPF was up 69%. Uh, the auto backlog was, was up another $3 billion to $16 billion. A big question for me is, will that auto unit get to a billion dollars of revenue that was committed at the, uh, at the, uh, at, at the analyst day? So um, all in all, I mean, my gosh, uh, a great quarter. Uh, on handset side, just some color there. It's funny, I, th I think this might be the first time I remember Qualcomm actually pointing out how much it does in, in, in a Samsung product, right? Usually it's kind of a hush-hush type of number, but they went all in even in their, in their investor deck saying that, that they increased their premium tier processor volume for the uh, Samsung uh, Galaxy S22 smartphone to 75%, up from 40% in the Galaxy uh, S21. Part of this, uh, I think, is attributable to just how good uh, the latest Snapdragon is. Uh, but also, uh, you know, the Exynos businesses, quite frankly, had a tough time, and you have a lot of users overseas demanding that they put uh, the Qualcomm chip in. I also have to give credit to uh, Qualcomm Marketing. Uh, they have a very aggressive, uh, essentially a Snapdragon inside uh, program that, that actually makes a difference uh, in, in smartphones. It might be hard for us to imagine this in the United States, but um, there is actually processor affinity. Uh, and, you know, in the case of uh, smartphone processors, the highest level of affinity and outside of the U.S., they're more surgical shoppers. Uh, in that they actually care about the processor uh, of it. And particularly when you might have some off brands, maybe brands that aren't super strong. You have a brand like uh, Snapdragon uh, uh, carrying, uh, uh, carrying the day. Yeah, it was, a, it was a, you hit a lot of the big points, Pat, but it was a very strong, robust quarter for the company. I mean, we've seen the chip uh, space all have a big drawdown. Uh, the ones that are on the front end, that saw the uh, not, front edge as a double entendre, not just leading edge, just the companies that are sort of seen as the, the, high, the highest growth have seen the biggest drawdown. So you've seen AMD, you've seen Nvidia and Qualcomm come back after really remarkable runs yeah. that took place when the, when the you know, chips were on high. Now, the funny thing about it is, Pat, is the demand doesn't really seem to be slowing all that much. If you actually look at the, um, you know, the, the Results, very good, Pat. But the other thing was the guidance was very good. I mean, the company doesn't seem to have any real indicators that the slowdown is going to be substantial anytime soon. If you go back and listen to my comments about Microsoft, some of it follows here, uh, follows right over here because bottom line, all that all that cloud, all that connectivity runs on chips. Now, for Qualcomm, it's, it's still largely in the handset space. But one of the stories of the day for Qualcomm is the diversification of its business. The company has worked really hard to make sure the market realizes that it's not only growing in handsets. Having said that, the handset business was remarkably good this quarter. So it kind of slowed down the momentum of that story a little bit because the disproportionate volume still kind of sits there. As you look here, you know, you got six point three billion in handsets. And then these other three adjacent businesses now, the R front end business, which kind of does tie into the handset business. It, it actually very literally does, but it's a different revenue stream. And then of course, you've got the automotive business with this $16 billion pipeline now, but it's not generating that in terms of revenue yet. Having said that, Pat, we probably should give some credit for the growth automotive has had because in the last couple of years, it's seen remarkably large growth. Um, and, you know, if you look at a company like NVIDIA, which is a bit of a hero of the day most days, um, the Qualcomm business in this particular space has outperformed. It just simply has I mean, outperformed. It's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's a four to five times larger business. Uh, NVIDIA seems stuck in that $100 million a quarter zone, you know? Yeah. And uh, the, the design wins have been been notable. You know, this this quarter they made the Stellantis 
uh, announcement, which is like 14 or 15 major global brands that are all going to build on Qualcomm and on their Snapdragon. Now, that really comes down to the fact that the company is focused on sort of the needs of the day, meaning while there is that L4, L5 um, promise for the future, yeah. right now we need L2+. Plus. We need next level of, of, of driver assist type technologies that can help with drive policy, uh, telematics, navigation, and that's the technology that they're offering, and they're making it very modular. But we've talked about that a lot. We'll do that another day. The IoT business, which is a bit of a catch-all for for a lot of parts of the Qualcomm business, but that the growth in that business has been really good. Uh, you'll see now they have basically all their businesses are on a trajectory to being over a billion dollar annual. Several of them now over $5 billion annually. And then, of course, that core handset business. Licensing business remains strong. It's not that big of a focus um, in terms of what the company's been talking about, but it is a really nice business to have when you think about a business that basically gets a little bit of revenue from every single mobile handset sold every day because of the investments that are made in uh, IP and the R in R&D by Qualcomm. So, Pat, Good top line, good bottom line, strong guidance, revenue diversification. Uh, you know, there's definitely more work to be done, but Qualcomm didn't really give the, mar the, the market any reason for its recent 30 to 40% drawdown, other than the fact that higher interest rates and inflation are creating a discount on future growth. So results good. Yeah, they rocked it. They totally rocked it. And if I had to pick a, uh, you know, the overall winner of, uh, you know, our podcast on earnings, it would definitely be a Qualcomm.